example of the church not checking themselves all the time about the kingdom of God being within them and checking the love and checking the, uh, the, the nature and stuff like that because they haven't done that this is why the church is falling away no yeah. that's that, that, that that's the the, the reason I, I mean coming back to your point okay no well it's the, it, well it's a real it's a really bad point the reason why the church is falling apart is because they're not following jesus's teachings yeah because they're not checking themselves they're no not, they're not going yeah to but jesus's teachings isn't teaching that jesus te taught jesus, jesus isn't taught you that the kingdom of god is within you he also taught that the kingdom of god is something that is established in the world around you as well um, only the, the only the only way you can establish it in the world around you is if you see it in yourself and when you see it in yourself you can see it all around you. no that's not that's what jesus Jesus has taught in the Gospels when you read Jesus's teachings about the parables of the kingdom of God let me show you it is something that happens yeah, something. in this world I'd love it. right firstly in the Lord's Prayer we say thy kingdom come thy will be done yeah. on earth. as it is in heaven yes so is the earth around us he's not talking about this thing. no you see there you go what you're doing no, hold on one second what you're doing is you're reinterpreting the words of Jesus to suit your view okay, okay, okay. that's that Jesus didn't say thy kingdom come thy will be done in me as it is in heaven he didn't say the earth as it is a metaphor to my inner soul as it in heaven no he said on earth as it is in heaven you can't reinterpret Jesus's words to suit your prior presuppositions. You have to deal with what Jesus says. Okay, let me give you an example. When Jesus said, be in the world, not of the world, for example. Correct. It doesn't literally mean be an in around all of the world, yeah? It means be in the world, be understand your human nature of who you are in this world, yeah? But don't, but don't, but don't identify with it. So when he says about the making about the king, same thing about the kingdom. But when your your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, it's talking about uh, uh, about living the life as a human being on this uh, in this body, yeah. In the in the physical in the physical manifestation, that's the earth. This is what you're doing there. That's eisegesis. You're pushing your own interpretations into the Bible. But you're You've got as well. you're, no, you're, 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 when Jesus. Let's let's actually look at his parables, right? So let let's just uh, let's just bear, bear with me one second, right? Bear with us one second, right? Yeah. So this is a parable about the kingdom of God, yeah? yeah, which is the parable of the fig tree. Now learn the parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that the summer is near. So you too, when you see all these things, recognize that he is near. My apologies. No, this is not what I'm looking for. It's a different one. That's talking about the return, the, the, the returning judgment. Like is faith, is faith and going to and praying and everything else. What about doing that in a well, Christians do do the work. We do the work of our Father when we act in mercy and justice, but, I mean, and when we pursue and pursue love, and and we do do the self examination. The apostles teach us: examine yourselves to see if you stay in the faith. And we are to confess our sins to one another according to the apostles. So that's all about self-examination. One of the disciplines that I teach to people is the idea of self-examination. The, the very concept of repentance is all about doing the inner work. That's what repentance means. It means change your mind. It says in Romans in 12, be transformed, be no longer conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your yeah, mind. And so as Christians, we practice it. If you read the spirituality of St. Ignatius of Leola and the, the, the Jesuit exercises, for instance, it's all about yeah, doing the sure. internal they, work. They totally did. No, no doubt the so, mystical saints 100% yeah, they personified did, yeah, yeah. That yes. without, without, without... And so... I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think, I don't think it's saying, though, oh, look, I've been an unmerciful person, I'm, I repent, I'm sorry, and, and then trying to be more merciful. I think it's really identifying, looking at you, 
how you acted, yeah, um, uh, really see it within yourself how it comes up, how it comes up, and and you being like you know more aggressive and not and, and not being merciful and things like that, really inside yourself, and then not identifying with it as in saying, okay, this is not me, I've got it in me, but it's not me, and detaching from it. From but it. you're just, you, you, but but you're you're not engaging with anything that I've just said. You're not engaging with anything I've just said. <laughs> You're literally just ignoring everything that I've just said. How? Right, because all you're doing is repeating your script because you know you've got someone who wants to listen. But this is a three-way conversation and I have pointed out to you that Jesus talks about the coming of the kingdom of God as a real thing that happens in the world. Right? And, and then why that did Jesus, is... Then why did Jesus say... Right, no, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Why did, why no, did one, Jesus one, say... Let me finish. The, the, let me finish. Him, when is the kingdom coming? Let me they finish. Said, he said... Let he me said, finish. the kingdom of God doesn't come with observation. Let me finish. Neither will people say, look, it's over there. Let me or, finish. Look, it's over there. Let me the finish. The kingdom of God is inside Yes, you. and that's one verse, bro. That's just one verse. I can give you many parables. He said, he said that the parable of the kingdom of God is like, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed yeah. that you plant into the ground Talking and it is the smallest of, of all the seeds and then as it grows, yeah. it grows to be the largest of all the trees yes. that even the birds of the air might settle yes. upon it. That is an talking idea. About inside of no, no, that's, that's your talking, eisegesis. No, that's talking about, that's your, no, that's no, talking no, about no, no, that's, that's your eisegesis. That's your eisegesis. When Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God, he's talking about the idea that that tree is something that grows in the world. It takes up space. It's something that casts a shadow. It's something that displaces earth. It's something that the birds sit upon. The metaphor is very real about it. Oh, you know, that's just you pushing that onto the text. So are you telling me, are you telling me is it literally a tree? It becomes a tree, the kingdom of God. Did I say that? No, because you're taking it literal. No, you're not listening because you never listen. I do listen. Whenever we have this conversation, you never listen to what I say, ever. Yes, I do. We, you know you don't and you're not doing it now, right? I am not denying that Jesus talks about the kingdom of God being within you. Mm -hmm. That is clearly taught by Jesus. Okay. But Jesus also teaches that that kingdom of God is, is something that expresses itself out in the world. It says that rivers of justice must flow from our hearts. Oh, Dad, I agree right? That. I agree, well, I agree. rivers of justice flowing from your heart, that's justice, it's a relational concept, so it's changing the world. It's impacting the, thank you. So therefore the kingdom of God is in the world. And Jesus says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's yes. in the world. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. Let me, let me, let me, so the problem. He's saying that everything that is, is, is okay. It's all part of everything. The, the, the oneness and the, the, we cannot, the, the sinner cannot help be sinning at that point. And that's, that's the unfolding of that. What I, what I want to encourage both no, of you. I'm talking about the, 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 that reading of the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses. You know how I see that verse? It means it's saying your will be done, your will is already done on, in heaven. Everything's already pure in your mind in heaven. Nothing is separated. It's just on, in our mind it's separate. But we, we need to purify our mind to the, to the thoughts of God. So God is not calling us a sinner. We are calling ourselves sinners. Right, one second. Everything's pure to but, God. But, but that's the point. What yeah. you're doing again, right? What you're doing again right now is you're targeting this woman because you know she'll listen to you and you're ignoring what I'm saying. You're not having a conversation with me, right? And you're just targeting her because you feel that she's susceptible to what you're saying. And you are doing... You're just reading into the text whatever you want. The, the key word of what you said is what I believe. No, it's not about what you believe. It's what Jesus taught. Now, let's look at some... Let's, let's look, let's look, let's, let's, let's look at what Jesus taught. Let's discuss it. Jesus said in, Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. What, what's righteousness? Right standing with God. Right, mm, it's right conduct before God. It's being okay, just, yeah, it's okay. protecting the meek. Yeah, yeah. And the, agreed? Yeah, yeah, okay. It's healing the sick, yeah. that kind of thing. Is that something you do in the world? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Right, let's move on. 
Luke 17, uh, 20 to 21. It's been lovely to but in order for, in order for you to actually be proper right standing with God, you need to realise within yourself, actually, this I, I am along with everybody else as a child of God, and I have that faith to know myself as a. You son of you God. want to say that to everybody? And hold on, hold on. <laughs> it doesn't matter who you're talking to. Son of God, and so that means that I walk in yes, this in we can, we can do it. Everything. Not only that, but in Deuteronomy it says in that yeah. the commandment that He gave is easy heaven. for us. It's not if like you have to go to heaven. Who's going to bring it back to us so we can? Okay, sister, I'd like. I know that. Let me just respond to yeah. him. I think in those those uh, parts of the text, he is saying he's giving more minute? advanced. If you'd like, so he's giving something that's a little bit harder yeah, to yeah, get. Yeah, yeah. He's giving a little bit, and I think he's saying what you're saying. That he's saying that we all are basically spirit. We all are the spirit. Yeah, we I think are, we all are beautiful souls. Uh, That's why our, I believe in, in I believe in a universal service. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna reply and just say that you're both agreeing with one another because you both want to you you know because you both want to make Jesus what you want him to be rather than what he is. You want to invent your own Jesus rather than deal with the Jesus of the Bible. So you're sounding a bit Islamic, if I might say. But I, you are saying I, 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 there's I, only I, one right way to interpret it, and that's our God way. I, 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 I am saying. I am saying. I am saying. About your belief. All right. right. So in John, belief, he cares about in John, heart. in Mark, in Mark 1:15, it yes. says, "The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel." At hand, where? Well, it's not in your hand, is it? Yes. So where is it then? Where? How is it at hand? It means it's 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 a, it's about to come. When Where? It's, hold on. It's about it's this. It's about to come. Where? When you wait, wait, wait. Can when you realise. Can I give you a gift? It was really. What's your name? It was really lovely to speak to you. God bless. Take care. Go on. It means it's about to come. You're very close to it in terms of that self-realisation of the kingdom of God being within you. It's coming. Right. Where is it coming? From within you. Right. Is that what Jesus says? Uh, he, well, he says, in some verses he says the, the kingdom of God is here now what about this I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven Okay. so that's about the kingdom of God impacting the way we do life on earth isn't it of course. right that's the point you're trying to make the kingdom of God just something internal when Jesus is saying it is something internal and external. No, it, it, it's, it's like symbiotic but, Yeah, but hold on. Yes, yeah, exactly. It, it's symbiotic. You got what it. it. What I'm explaining. But what he's doing, he wants to make it entirely internal. No, no, no. He wants to make it entirely no. mystical and he doesn't want the real world application of it. No, no, I didn't say that at all. I didn't say that. I don't know you're putting words in my mouth. I didn't say that. I'm basically explaining when you realise it internal, then, and, and you realise yourself as, the as a child of God, you can then be inspired to move by the Spirit to manifest the Kingdom of God in the world. Right, so that is a position that Christians believe in. Yes. But, right, but, but, but they, so where are you disagreeing with Christians right now? But, but because, because most Christians don't but actually believe the Kingdom of God is within you. I don't know a single Christian that would argue that. You've just invented a fictional Christian. I've spoke to many Christians, I suppose. Well, you've obviously spoke to a lot of ignorant Christians then. But the yeah, kingdom probably, of God, yeah, yeah. but the kingdom of God is is contained by those who are Christian. You're not a Christian. The kingdom of God is not in you. The kingdom of God the is in me God and within everybody. within my and that prove that from Jesus' teachings. Okay. Uh, Where does Jesus say the kingdom of God is in everybody? What about when he was casting out demons? Yeah, he's not literally casting out monsters that live inside him. Let, let, let's just let's just read some here, right? But it, it is. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. So that's the idea of the kingdom of God invading a space. Okay. There is someone who's possessed yeah. by a demon, and then by the Spirit of God that demon is cast out, and so the kingdom of God has come upon them. Meaning. Meaning, Meaning yeah. that it is not just internal and it doesn't belong to everybody. If you're possessed by demons, yeah. you don't have the kingdom of God. Okay, no, everybody's got it indwelt within them. Show me Jesus saying that. Hmm? Show me where Jesus says that. Okay, where does Jesus say that? Okay, he doesn't say it anywhere. Thank you. He does not say no, it anywhere. So we're following what Jesus says about the kingdom of God, not what you say it's about God, the kingdom of God. Uh, yes, God is omnipresent. 
So if God is omnipresent, he's everywhere, right? Yes, his so presence that mean, is everywhere. So that means his presence is everywhere. So that but that isn't mean, the kingdom of God. Hold on. That isn't hold the on. kingdom of God. No, no, the no. tree has the presence of the power of God because it is sustained by the word okay, of God. On, let me finish. But the, ki the tree isn't the kingdom of God. It doesn't obey God's command. Let me finish. So God of omnipresence is everywhere. That means his spirit, his essence is in everything, within every soul. Yeah? No. Hold, hold on. It means his essence is in every soul. We don't and agree with that. And that's why Paul says the kingdom of God is love, joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It, it means it means that it's, it's in everybody, but it has to manifest through you. Do, listen to this, Matthew seven twenty one. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. So does the kingdom of heaven belong to everybody, or is Jesus correct and not everyone will possess it? Who's right, you or Jesus? Uh, well, uh, yeah, it's the context of understanding that. No, what, what does it mean? What does this mean? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. So does everyone possess it or not? Not right. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, everybody's got it innate within them. No, that's, show me a verse where Jesus says that. Mm. Okay, he doesn't really talk about Thank that. Thank you. So my point is, bro, you don't know what Jesus is teaching. You just don't. And what you do is you fixated on this idea where you've, you've captured something of what Jesus said and then you've obsessed about it to the nth degree where you can't see anything else. The reality is you need to familiarize yourself with everything that Jesus said because Jesus blatantly says that not everyone possesses the kingdom of God. He says exactly the opposite. He okay, says, go, not okay. everyone who okay. says to me, Lord, Lord, the, will enter the kingdom of heaven. No, it doesn't. No, not, no, no, no way. John 1.12. Not everybody. Not, not wait, wait, wait. Not everything what, what about John 1.12? That we, we can win the right of becoming children of God. Yeah, but that doesn't but mean we know, are. That's right. There we go. That's a, I'm confirming what you say. But, okay, right. We're on. So there's another example. Jesus does, clearly doesn't say everything that's in the Bible. Because... What Jesus doesn't say everything every, that's in the G Bible. What Jesus said is clearly not in the Bible. Yeah, Jesus said stuff that doesn't yeah. appear in for the example, Bible. Yeah. For example, can we get a so are you saying that you've got mystical knowledge that's unique to you that Jesus revealed to you personally? Okay, for example, when I when I had my mystical encounter, it revealed to me yeah, that I, it, it, my my own I am state was yeah. awakened. Yes. Yeah. My own I am state was awakened, and I was this pure as as the, as the Bible says, God is love, God yeah. is truth. Yeah. I was this love. And I was connected to everything, within everything, and everything was in me. You it had was... an encounter with a demon, and you were lied to, brother. Really? So, so the, so the mystics say the same. The mystics all had that same encounter. They, 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 they were... If it leads them away from Christ, as your teachings have led you away from Christ, then yes, they would have also encountered demons. That's what you encountered. No, it wasn't. Yes, because it led you away from Christ. A mystical experience that comes from God leads you to Jesus, not who, away from who, Jesus. Who, who said I would move away from Jesus? You teach against what Jesus taught. No, I don't. You don't believe Jesus is God. You don't believe in the Trinity. I didn't. You I don't believe. Do you believe that? Do you believe in the Trinity? Do you glorify Father, Son, okay. and Holy Spirit? My 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 understanding has changed over over a little bit, but. Wait, but, you, you now believe in the Trinity? Hold on, but but it's, it's still not, it, one second. It's not the same as well, the way that most Christians would say it. I would say that the Father, the Father is the Father is God. The Father is God, and within the Father dwells the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, uh, it was the presence of the Holy Spirit, which is the breath of God, or the feminine aspect of God. And um, and within and within that, it, within the breath of God, dwells the Son. What? Well, hold on. Of the Son, which is not just Jesus, which is all of life. Okay, can I can I encourage you to go away and study what Jesus teaches about the kingdom of God? Because you've you've you you you, you just don't know what you're talking about, honestly. Like you just don't know. And and I've demonstrated that because you've stated things that are in direct contradiction to what Jesus said. And my point to you is, and I, I try to reach out to you again. Right? There is a point at which if you are intellectually proud, no one can correct you. Like we've literally give you evidence, me just, just between those two. 
have literally given you evidence showing that your statement that everyone can possess the kingdom of God and that the kingdom of God is in everybody is not a teachings of Jesus. So are you telling me about 800 No, Jesus is telling you. Jesus is telling you. Are you telling me that people that have really been sincere, that have tried to seek the truth, or that have died trying to seek the truth, or that something's happened to them, and they've had a mystical experience, which is about eight or 900 million people worldwide, and they say the same thing, exactly the same thing as I'm saying, they've all been deceived by the devil. I am saying that if your mystical experiences don't lead you to God, your mystical experiences are from the devil. That's what I'm saying. If your mystical experiences lead you to the truth, then it's from God. The way to judge a mystical experience, because the scripture says to test the spirit, to test the spirit to see if the spirit is from God, is to see if it leads you to the God of Israel. Your teachings, your, your mystical experience has led you away from the God of Israel. You deny the Trinity. You deny Jesus' teachings. You deny... Councillor Trent, Councillor Constantine. That's politics, isn't it, what you're talking about? You will enter It's your idea. You know, it's I know, they're getting their own ideas from a book. I'm getting my ideas from Jesus' teachings. Yeah, but it's what we decided. Are you an Aryan? I'm not, no, I'm not an Aryan. What, what, what's your perspective, bro? Well, I suppose I am because I do believe, I do believe in Jesus. Yeah. But I believe Jesus came to tell us that we were all the sons of God. Right, where does Jesus do that? Show me. Well, I can't show you right now. Right. Use Google. You use Google. You use, I mean, use Google because Jesus doesn't teach that. He teaches the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. And this is the point. You can't have your Jesus. Yeah, but the scriptures that wasn't in the Bible, isn't there? You know, there's like the Gnostic Gospels. So, so again, what you're, what, what, what you're doing there is because you want to hold on to a belief, you're fitting the evidence around the belief you want to hold. Well, no, not really. I mean, the Gnostic Gospels were written centuries after Jesus. They're too late. The Gospels... Prove it. Prove it. Experts have said you just said something that's not true. Prove it. Right? So, this is Jesus' teachings. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. To become. Which means that they weren't. And it also means that if you don't believe, then you aren't. So, in that one statement, you have two clear proofs that not everyone is a child of God and not everyone becomes a child of God. And my point to you is, what's your name, Rob? Rob. Nice to meet you, Rob. Thank you. My point to you is, Rob, is that we can't have our Jesus. We can't invent the Jesus we want. We've got to have the Jesus of the first century. And the only Jesus of the first century we know about is the Jesus of the Gospels. Have you got a Gospel? Yes. Okay. Yeah? That's the only Jesus we can know about. We can't know about a different There's Jesus. Different yeah, thank you. What are the dates? Some say 140 AD, some say 100 AD, some say 30 to 60 AD. And, and who, wh wh what website are we using? Uh, okay, so... Who's the scholars that give the early dates? I'm having, I'm having a quick look. Have you heard of Bible Odyssey? Bible Od... Bro, that's not an academic. Okay. Right? I'm telling you... All the, the, all academics see the Gospel of Thomas as late. It's a late Gnostic text. It's, it's a late Gnostic text. It's after, well after the Gospels. If you want, you, when we try to learn about Jesus, we've got to use the earliest available evidence. And the earliest available evidence is the Gospels. That's where we've got to start. We can't go somewhere else. Right, and then we build from there. That's where we start. We build from the Gospels. It's written language though, isn't it? I mean, no, it's they didn't necessarily come at that time. They could have come long before, but the, there's no evidence. What, what are we talking about here, sorry? Well, I mean, all the different sort of like uh, parts of uh, where are it now, where all the scriptures came from. They came from different parts, didn't they? The territory. Yeah, I mean, they were they were written in different places. That's yeah, true. And the council yeah. in the sea, they got all the books together. Didn't no, they? And they that, not at the no, 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 that's not at the council. That it's not the council in Nicaea. Right, which one was that? Uh, the, your, your, it's the Council of, it's the Synod of Carthage that, that, that is the last synod that ever addresses this question. There wasn't, there wasn't a council that decided which books were in the Bible, except the, 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 the Carthage one, which happened in 410. 
But the reality is that Christians were using the Gospels centuries before the Council. Like, Christi you, you, you read the Church Fathers and they're quoting, like, um, um, say, um, what's his name? Ah, uh, the Clement of Rome. Like Clement of Rome, he's writing in 90 AD and he's quoting the Gospels. So the Gospels were there in 90 AD and they're quoted by Church Fathers every year, every of the hundred years, up to the Council of Carthage by Church Fathers who were quoting them. St. Irenaeus, St. Ignatius, St. Uh, Clementine, like all the, the Church Fathers are quoting the Gospels. It was at the Council of Carthage that the books of the Bible were finally sort of agreed upon, agreed sealed. Upon, but those books that we find in the New, can, uh, the New Testament canon were being used by the church for centuries before that, right? So they were there before they were canonized. Canonization came later, but the, 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 the writings of the New Testament were there centuries before in the first century documents. And that's where we have to start if we want to learn about Jesus, right? Arius himself was very late, right? Arius himself was 300 years after Jesus, yeah? And, and as Christians, the Christianity that I believe in predates Arius. So Arius was the one that got it wrong. Yeah? You've got a Bible, so are, are, are you a Christian yourself? I believe in Jesus. Okay. I believe in Jesus. That's a great start. And, and I would encourage you to build on that belief, you know? And to that end, I'd like to give you a gift. Yeah? Yeah, and, sure and there you go. <laughs> right? I got a religious studies degree for a reason, bro. Yeah. So you've got you've got a new te you've got a Bible, you say. Is that correct? Yes. Right, I don't want to give you a Bible then. Let me find you something else to have. Do you know something? Have I just got Bibles now? Is that all I've got? There you go. That's for you. Nice one, thank you. Yeah. God bless you. you too, right, I'm gonna stop now. I'm gonna go Pleasure sit in the wall. I'm going now. One quick, one quick question. Too late. I'm going. Well, you I've can walk with me. I've been waiting for you for that since you. You can walk with me. Come and have a cup of tea with me then. All right then.